I want you to imagine for a second that you are running a family business. And this is a family business that prints textbooks for college kids. And this is a great business. It's like 90 years old, and you've seen some ups and downs. You know, you've had recessions, but this is a great business because every year there's new, fresh-faced college kids coming in to buy textbooks. So everything's cooking along. You're a little nervous about the economy, but you're like, we're going to be okay. Until, of course, your entire world was shattered by a Kindle. Everyone know what a Kindle is? Right, it's a digital book reader. It's like an iPod for books. So when my kids, who are now 10 and 12, go to college, they won't know what a textbook is. Disruptive creativity has completely put this old school industry out of business. Now I want you to imagine for a second that you run a local shoe store, strip mall, you've got some happy customers, they've been coming back for years, and you've got a nice selection, a couple hundred pairs of shoes, and everything is going just fine until your entire world is shattered by Zappos. You people Zappos? Does anyone Zappos? All right. So in the same way that Google is now a verb, like you Google something, Zappos, I think, is a verb too. But not from a consumer standpoint. It's a verb from a business standpoint. Like, I'm going to go Zappos my competitors. I'll tell you what, I'd much rather be the Zappos or than get totally Zappos by somebody else. And that's what they're doing. They sell shoes online. They ship for free both ways. And they have over a million pairs of shoes in stock. The company grew in less than 10 years and recently sold for $800 million. Talk about an entrepreneurial success story. There is hardly an industry around today that's not in the midst of massive upheaval. Many of the businesses in this room, the article that we read last night, talking about a pivot point, a change, an inflection point that people will either adapt or die. It's Darwin at its finest. And that's what I'm going to really focus on today is that we are now entering a new age the age of creativity. And this is an age where the currency of success is no longer manufacturing or access to raw materials. It's imagination and creativity and original thought. Now, as Dan mentioned, this is a very personal topic for me, being a jazz musician. I've actually been uh, playing. I used to sneak into bars in Detroit uh, when I was around 13. So I've been playing in live performances for over 25 years. Jazz is a great art form because it's all spontaneous. It's like creativity in real time. You can't go back. You can't touch anything up. It's just happening as you go. The pressure's on. You're under the lights. Your reputation's at stake, and you've got to create right then and there. Well, if we swap out the jazz lingo and replace it with business terms, that's exactly what all of us do every day in the business world. We spontaneously create. So I'm in the middle of uh, well, just finishing a book, and it's coming out later this year. It's on the specific topic of creativity and how businesses can apply a process to build, nurture, and grow creativity. And so I'm going to share with you today not only my own personal experiences as an entrepreneur and also as a jazz musician, but also the research that I've done for this book, which included over 200 interviews with thought leaders all over the world people who are entrepreneurs, CEOs, musicians, artists, nonprofit leaders. So I'm going to share some stories with you and really what the best practices are to build creative cultures. So the first thing I'd like to share with you is a giant myth. And that myth is that creativity is only needed at the top. People who are in other roles other than a, a, an executive role might say, hey, you know, that's just for celebrity CEOs like Meg Whitman of eBay. Or that's just for inventors or R&D people, like Dr. Roger Newton, who invented Lipitor. But in the new era of business, creativity is for all of us. Creativity is the difference maker when a customer service rep is on the phone and engenders indifference versus loyalty. Creativity is the difference when a loan officer is on the phone and gets the sale versus doesn't. So creativity is the way that we run our weekly staff meetings or the way that we talk to our team in the halls. And that process has to permeate, be part of the DNA of companies that are going to win in the future. So to really understand why it's so important right now, we need to take a quick look backwards. And we're going to start at the first wave of economic success here in the US, which was the agricultural age. Now, in the agricultural age, there were a few key elements that allowed people to succeed. These were the competitive advantages of the day, things like sunlight, access to fertilizer, seeds, climate, land. And if you had those things, those are good competitive advantages. You were probably doing pretty well. And if nothing changed, everything would have been great. Except as we know, 
things change. And along came the Industrial Age. Those that embraced the new era went on to make giant fortunes, and those that didn't rotted on the vine. In the Industrial Age, sunlight didn't matter anymore. Now it mattered. What mattered was access to raw materials and labor contracts and machinery. Again, a whole new set of competitive advantages emerged. Those that embraced it won. Those that didn't perished. So Cleveland and Detroit and other industrial cities grew up in this era. And everything was going great, but again, things changed. And we entered the information age. And in the information age, factory equipment didn't matter anymore. Now what mattered was bandwidth and access to bits and bytes and how you can take a process and replicate it again and again and again in a very efficient way. Companies and cities and towns that didn't adapt paid the price. And unfortunately, many of us live in some of those old school industrial areas. On the other hand, areas like Seattle or San Francisco that embraced the times went on to enjoy tremendous success. Here's the thing. The financial meltdown of 2009 and the global recession punctuated the end of one era and are signifying the beginning of a new one. And this new era is the age of creativity, where the raw materials of success, the currency of success, become original thought and imagination and other right brain activities. The winners of the next era of business will be, look a lot more like artists than just technicians. So most businesses today are engaged in a war, and often it's a competitive arms race. How do you get ahead with these mounting competitive pressures? Well, the pressures are on for many reasons. They're on because things are becoming commoditized. Even information itself, if you think about it, has become commoditized with Wikipedia and Google. You can no longer control information as a primary business model. Speed. Full business cycles that used to take a decade are now happening in the matter of a couple months. You also have barriers that have completely shrunk. If you had a great idea in the industrial age, you'd still have to build a factory and hire a you know, get a distribution system going. Now a kid in a college dorm room with a high-speed internet connection can create a billion dollars or more of wealth by starting Facebook. And finally, globalization. You can no longer win by just controlling your costs. You, as Dan said yesterday, you can only squeeze the middle so far. And at some point, you need to innovate in order to grow. So what's happening, if you think about it, in our country is we have this problem. And the problem is this. The need for creativity is increasing dramatically. But unfortunately, our creative abilities are decreasing. You say, well, why are they decreasing? They're decreasing because we grow up in schools that teach us to follow the rules, guess what the teacher knows, there's only one right answer, and to be obedient instead of taking risks. They're decreasing because we spend hours in front of Xbox instead of challenging our kids' imagination. They're decreasing because we spend time in organizations beating the creativity out of people because we're imposing systems and fear on these people rather than engaging their imagination. So what we have today is this gap that's growing, and I'm really worried about it. Because today on the world stage, the US is still an economic superpower. Not because of our manufacturing, because you can do it better overseas. Not because of our access to raw materials, because we've dwindled them. We're still a superpower because of our creativity, Hollywood, software, etc. But I feel like there's a hole, there's like a leaky hole in that balloon that's starting to rush out. And if we don't do something about it, we could be really facing some serious challenges.